<laughs> so we're just going to kind of hang at the front and um, if you have any questions feel free to just put your hand up. Um, I'm going to kind of just kick th things off um, with a general question for everyone. Um, thinking about how this night is like a feminist arts night, I wondered um, how you see the relationship between arts and activism? Anyone? <laughs> <laughs> you personally, you personally what do you do in that? Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, the two are, are do you want me to show you the mic? It's a bit of a... Oh, do you want me to climb here? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's going to be like, these like, spit some bars or something. <laughs> <laughs> I can see right now. Um, for me personally, the two are completely like and entwined for me. Like I started writing because I wanted to raise awareness of um, of working class issues. Of you know, I wanted to give LGBT plus people a voice. I wanted to write about feminism and about how women are generally treated in society and my experiences. There's um, I start. I suppose the people that first influenced me like were people like there's a old punk band from the 70s called Crass and I used to love listening to Crass and I was like yeah man I want, I want to be like Crass that's what I want to do and like I, I love L7 as well and like things like that and they were like the first people that got me like really wanting to do writing and stuff so yeah it was or oh, I always wanted to give like a, that's the whole point of what I do try and give a voice to people that don't necessarily have a voice so yeah so that's my answer. No, I'm sticking to it. <laughs> do you want to yeah, I'll go now because I've got about nine million things going around in my head, and probably about half of one will come out. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Um, no, you don't because I've not said it. Um, no, uh, mm, yeah, uh, arts, activism. Uh, I don't know. Pers every, everything I've done has sort of come out that way. I've been in um, sort of. Uh, kind of agit prop fringe theatre and stuff a, a, a long time ago with um, uh, Vice Versa of Co That's and Poison that. Girls. We, we did these, <laughs> we, we did these new musicals, which um, one of them was called uh, Mother Russia is a Lesbian. Um, <laughs> 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 anyway, uh, uh, a bit... No, no, they were great fun and very serious as well. At the same time. Anyway, but it's, it's just I never deliberately set out to, but um, I, I can sometimes when I'm writing things, I go, oh, is that what I think? Oh, no. I just write it and they go, oh, no, okay. And uh, like, tonight I was going, right, feminine, it's ridiculous. I was going, right, feminine. What you going to do? Oh, you, 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 you're, you're too, uh, no, none of your stuff is, oh, you're too, hmm, they'll just think you're frivolous. Uh, and then I went, I can't, wait, you know, so it's kind of in, in, intrinsic, in, internal, and but I grew up, we always grew up with, you didn't specifically ask about activism, I mean feminism, uh, but I grew up with very strong women role models, I mean my mother and, and grandmothers, and they would never, because of the time, have identified as feminism, and, and it wasn't probably even coined for them. And then, when it got to the 70s, it was, it was all comedians on telly mm -hmm. talking about burning your bras and stuff like that. And so they might even have then, even though they'd always worked and stuff, and just and it was just never... Anyway, so it just was always there. And I said, anyway, I've gone on. <laughs> <laughs> so was, no, really. You come, come Go for it. Come in here. Come, come, come in here. <laughs> yeah, just a really quick thing to add to that. A lot of... Activism, I think anyway, um, isn't just getting up and shouting it on stage. Like I'm so, and I know you are as well. So keen to take it into community groups that just wouldn't have it otherwise. Um, a lot of work with um, young girls in the northeast. The place I live um, was voted the worst place to grow up in the UK um, as a girl. Um, is, oh, it so, is it Sunderland? It's Middle East Park. Oh, oh. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a great place. Um, so a lot of it was kind of, I moved all over and then went back to where the shit hit the fan for me as a girl and then tried to make it a bit better. So it is, it's taking it, if you're privileged enough to have it, take it to people who don't. Mm -hmm. 
And can I just also say, I think that um, joy and fun and things like that can also be like the art of activism as well. Absolutely. Just having, just having a good time and just meeting up and going to spaces and I think that's, you know, the, I can't believe I'm going to say this. It, what I also do is I'm in a women Bruce Springsteen tribute band. <laughs> We're called Bruce Springsteen and the Street Band, um, and I'm Bruce. It's great. I love it. But that, but that's like sort of, I didn't plan to say that tonight. But, but what I mean is the fact that when we, when we did we did a charity gig for the for, the, for our women's centre that was closing down, with to raise some money from, set all their funding cut. But just getting people there all dressed up in their like eighties clothes and like just dancing. That felt like a political act, and like I felt like activism. Just people having a nice time. Yeah. Like things are hard. Like people need to have a nice time as well. That's important. Yeah. I think. Yeah. True. Yeah. 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 Um, so this one might be a bit of a tricky one, but um, are there any particular kind of issues that are um, to do with gender? that are on your mind at the moment, um, or any particular campaigns you're involved with, or anything like that that you kind of like want to raise particular awareness about right now? Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, oh. <laughs> I need to think. Oh, no, I'll, go, I'll go in. Go, I'm going in yeah. here. I'm going in hard with this yeah. one. Um, yeah, so I suppose uh, I, it's not really like a campaign or such, but I've just finished doing a six week course um, teaching community radio to a group of women in our community and trying to get them involved with community radio and just um, because there's not a lot of women's voices in radio and um, it's just really good for them as like a confidence builder and we've been doing loads of stuff getting them to do links and all that sort of thing and that's been really cool but it just made me realize how much of a lack of like women's voices and stuff we have on air and in those types of areas so I don't know if that answers your question but that's that's what's going on in my mind right now. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded really weird when I said that. I don't know if you've got a I will, but I've not really got another I've not really got an answer. Okay. As in, um, no, I haven't. Um, no, I'm not directly involved in any uh, um, gender thing. I mean, I just like to think that I'd just be kind of inclusive of everybody, whatever, you know, and w would never... But I'm not particularly involved in any campaigning or anything right now. Um, I was going to say something else, but gone. Um, no, uh, not not directly, but just that wasn't at all what I was going to say. <laughs> it really isn't. I, yeah, I had thought. No, but that yeah, will come back to me. Go. You do like, you do work in schools with I your do. women. That's what you do. I do. Tell the people about it. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'm involved in a great project um, that's just in the northeast at the minute, but I'm really hoping other people pick it up and run with it. It's called Girl Kind, and all it is is we go into schools, um, the girls in the schools choose to come in the workshop, um, they don't have to, they can leave at any point, and it is just the place where we get them to do some basic craft stuff while they talk about whatever they want to talk about. Um, and, and a lot of things are raised in that and I think just being able to give women the voice who maybe in their family don't have that kind of time at all is really helpful. Did anything I've said make sense? Yeah, awesome. yeah, totally. <laughs> oh, I, I just remember, I was just going to say no, but the only thing, uh, uh, it's not gender specific, but um, I'm in, in an organisation, loosely, uh, called Poetry on the Picket Line. I mean, okay, so <laughs> um, all sorts of people who was... I'm looking at you, I should be looking at the audience, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's because you asked ask the question, it's like... Um, yeah, Poetry on the Picket Line, we go and support... We go and... It's probably a bit arrogant of us, but we go and spout poetry at people when they're, when, when they're picketing and they're standing there all day, whether they're cleaners from... Um, uh, where was it? Uh, university, college... Um, all, all sorts of McDonald's, Picture House, Strikers, all, all manner of people, all sorts of things. Anyway, <laughs> kind of a half ass plug no, that. That's great, that's great. Um, Look out for us. And of course, if anyone wants to kind of mention anything in the audience now, anything 
to do with that kind of question, or if you have any questions for any of the artists. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to ask a question about um, your relationship to your writing, because you kind of hear stuff and it's so polished and put together, but like about how it is actually writing, sometimes it can be really frustrating, like if you have routines or kind of, yeah, your relationship with your writing practice. <laughs> um, no. Yeah, no, no, no. no, I think, uh, yeah, for me, like, I'm really dyslexic as well. So, like, I just, just write in, like, and trying to get things to make sense can be a bit of a struggle. But with, um, I suppose, so I write prose as well. And with that, when I'm writing prose, I don't know if it's the same for people. Like, I feel like I can get on, I've got a plan, I can sit down, I can write the story, like, I do a little bit each day and try and do about an hour, half an hour in the morning. With poetry, it's just like an explosion in my brain that happens every once in a while. And you'll write like one line and then you'll come back to it like three months later and you'll be like, oh, I understand what that means now. <laughs> like the one that, the new one that I read tonight, literally I've redrafted that about seven times and it was nothing like it was in the first draft. And that's for me throwing it in the bin and taking it out. And so it's, it's pain. The routine is pain, basically. <laughs> but yeah, it's different. I find poetry... Writing poetry different to writing like the prose stuff, basically. I don't know if that answers your question, but yeah. Yeah, I kind of um, I write as a massive thing for my mental health. If I don't write, I go for a few days and I have to bring it back down with that. So what is actually in my notebook is just horrendous scribbles, um, <laughs> and it is it's coming back to it after a while. And editing is just such a massive thing. I, I can't tell you how much, how many edits everything goes through. A massive thing for me that massively helps is to read it aloud. If you're going to be performing it aloud, your edit should be for aloud. Aloud, aloud, aloud. Aloud, aloud. Aloud. I'm going to work sort of backwards <laughs> on this, but yeah, I, I agree. I do a lot of editing and I also feel I have to write and, um, and if, I, if I don't, I did go through a bit of writer's block not long ago and uh, interestingly at a time when you think I would write more than ever because of grief and stuff just, um, and, and, and then I didn't and then of course it all came out and, uh, um, uh, but I find I just have hundreds of notebooks and I get on my own nerves and things written on the back of envelopes and stuff and, and uh, you, you know and you get you, you write something down on, on the night bus or something like that, and you go, oh, what a genius, what a brilliant idea. <laughs> and the next day you go, what? <laughs> the heck what do you think? What is that? But equally also, sometimes in my early morning stuff, I just get on the computer and I just go, I was free writing, well I remember. Um, get on the computer and go, all this mad stuff, and then I just put it, to one side and I come back and sometimes I go months later I go, Crikey, did I write that? And 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 sometimes it's good and I can work with it, but I, editing, editing, really. I don't know what I do without cutting and pasting because my handwriting is so crap. Um have I answered the question? Yeah. And I, I also think not being afraid not to write as well. I think people feel that you have to write all the time and if I'm not writing I'm doing something wrong and you know and they, there's this real pressure, on, I think on poets especially, not on musicians so much, because they turn up and when a musician like, does the same song again, no one thinks anything of it. Everyone's just like, yeah, cool, they're just doing that song I like. But there seems to be this thing in the poetry community, when you go to a poetry night and, you, and you're like, I'm sorry guys, I did this last time we were here, I'm really sorry, I'm really sorry about that. And you apologise for reading the same poet again. And I think, I think you don't have to do that. I think that's okay. And I th thank you. <laughs> um, and I, I, I went, I, so I wrote my first collection, then I went for a period of six months of not really writing anything that I liked at all. And then me thinking, oh, I've lost it, I've lost it, man, it's gone. Mm. But actually, it comes back. And, it, and I think don't fear not writing as well, I'd say that. Yeah. Mm. I think there's a lot of pressure. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah I, I really agree with that. Um, I don't really, I kind of write just randomly, but I am trying to have more of just actual dedicated, not just writing time, but editing time as yeah. well. And, or 
if I have a particular project, like project time, um, so that things actually go somewhere. And um, yeah, the, I, I definitely do the thing, the thing that I'm bad at is memorising poems. So I always just bring out, if I want to do one off by heart, it's just like years old now. And um, yeah, so recently, um, if you have seen any Muddy Feet poetry videos, I did a, a couple of videos with them and I was like, I have no choice. They're like five years old, but that's it. Um, but I think, you know, if, if you like the poem, then, then it's good. And, and I think a lot of the time people do like hearing the poems again that they like. Um, yeah, it's good. Okay, any other questions? I think there was a hand at the back earlier. <laughs> no? I wanted to ask how you found your voice in, is it Derby? Yeah. Because I have a friend who I no longer talk to, but she grew up in Derby. Mm -hmm. I remember her telling me how, kind of, what a toxic environment it was. Yes, great. So how, <laughs> how did you find your voice and individuality growing up somewhere like that? It was hard, man. Like, we just got, you just got to do the thing. It, it's difficult because, like, it's, I suppose, growing up in Derby, like, in London, there's a lot of, like, you know, there's a lot of, like, arts events on, there's a lot of events on and things happening. Whereas in Derby, I don't know if it's the same where you are, there's not a lot. It's very, it's a proper, like, football town. Well, it's more like a football village, even though it's a city, like. But it's that sort of mentality, like, you know, like, even just, like, walking around like this, People in London, they don't think nothing of it. You walk around town and, oh, what's the latest person they're calling me? There's this rapper called 6 ix 9 don't know if you guys know that. Yeah. All the teenagers think it's hilarious to follow me around Derby at the moment be like, 6 9 can I have your autograph? <laughs> um, yeah, it's like, it's, it's, it's true. <laughs> and so it, I find it really difficult, if I'm being honest. Like, it's not an easy place, but we've set up, like, we've got, we've got like a female um, kind of led spoken word and all there and how she speaks and there's more and more kind of like DIY groups getting together and just putting on events and doing stuff. You just gotta be brave man. You just gotta do the thing. But yeah, it's uh it was a challenge but I appreciate it now because I've got things to write about. So yeah. it's quite just you know just flip it on its head and it use it to its advantage. Do you wanna write do you, do you want to write? Do you wanna say oh, in, on, in regards to that all writing thing. Yeah. <laughs> Um, for me, it was it was time away. I kind of I fled the town at eighteen and didn't ever want to go back to it, um, which maybe wasn't the answer and wasn't helping that community. But it meant I could go to other places and see what I liked and pick bits to bring back with me, um, and then try and start something from a grassroots level because there just there just isn't that much set up, and it is it's community. People going out and going, I have this thing I want to do with people. Can you? I'll do it for free. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's it's a heart project, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I do actually. <laughs> um, uh, I I grew up in. It's a suburb of Manchester, um, but it's only twenty uh, minutes away. Or so on on the it's a newfangled tram now, but it was a train in those days, and I had to leave really to kind of be myself and then go back again and I, um, and I, I do recall going back as a, as a punk for Christmas or something and then um, and I didn't have a telly or anything and, and I was completely baffled when people were shouting Fraggle Rock! <laughs> <laughs> and so, so it's, um, you know and you get all, all, all that kind of thing. it was really narrow mind. now it's, it's, it's fine when I go back um, and it's just become more part of Manchester again. But I, I used to escape. I did go back for a while when I was, uh, you know, in my 20s and stuff. I did go back and, and had a, a, a great time, but always had to go into Manchester. Never really Bury or Bolton or Radcliffe, which is where I'm from, which was a paper mill town. But, hmm. Uh, but, you know, there's no industry there now. It's just an outpost of Manchester. That's another story. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, I had to leave. I had to leave and go back and then come down again to find it. But, yeah, I don't know. I did feel a bit weird. So. I always feel a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> and where did you leave to, though? Was it to London? Yeah. Yeah. Is that what the leaving is to, to is, is, is London the Well, I the wish place I'd gone somewhere else, really. Well, I'm just wondering. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, because, 
<laughs> actually, in a way. Manchester has now become one of the great. I know, yes, I know. I know. You know, no, it's great. Because thank God. Yeah, you know, and uh, yeah, it's yeah. great. Yeah, it's great. My my leaving was to Birmingham. Was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And live with a bunch of art students, and it was cool. Yeah, we had fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then came back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Rome's yeah. cool. Yeah. Rec fully recommend. <laughs> <laughs> Mine wasn't London either, but it was, it was kind of all over different mm. places. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's so fun! <laughs> you can tell we're poets, isn't it? We're awful. Like, I'm fine for my words, but ask me, ask, answering questions are awful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, if there are no more questions, then we will just wrap things up here. Um, so, thank you to all our features. Open my phone. <laughs> I know, I hope you weren't recording that bit. <laughs> I was meant to be, but... Oh, yeah.